Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. This is Aftab and we are uploading these videos as part of the online teaching learning process. Today's topic of discussion is gyroscope. Already we have discussed this topic earlier in regular class. We will try to understand the underlying physics behind the gyroscopic principle and relate the same with real world examples. What we see on the screen are two different scenarios in real world. What do you think about this? In the first one, a toy is rotating about a vertical axis in the clockwise direction, viewing from the top. And in the second one, the fan is oscillating about the vertical axis. Do they share anything in common? Or are they totally independent? Let's try to understand. The key term of our discussion is angular velocity. What is angular velocity? As an object moving in a straight line is associated with a linear velocity, an object executing a circular motion is associated with an angular velocity omega, which is specified in radians per second. Mathematically, omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60, where n is the number of revolutions per minute. And omega is a vector quantity. A vector quantity is specified with the following information. Number 1. The magnitude then the direction of axis of spin and the sense of rotation. Now the magnitude is given by the expression omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. Direction of axis of spin is x, y, z coordinates of a three-dimensional coordinate system. And sense of rotation is given by clockwise or counterclockwise. How do we combine these three informations? For that, we will use the right hand thumb rule shown on the screen. The rule says that keeping the fingers curving on the inside pointing towards the sense of rotation, stretching out the right hand thumb outwards perpendicular to fingers, then the thumb indicates the direction of spin. Which means that the vector quantity can be represented as a single vector, the length of which gives the magnitude the direction of the vector gives the sense and the axis about which the rotation is taking place. If the mass of the rotating object is also considered, another term called angular momentum can also be discussed in this context. Angular momentum is given by the product of I and omega, where I is the moment of inertia of the object. Obviously, this is also a vector quantity, the direction of which can be determined using the right hand thumb rule. Knowing these two simple terms, that is angular velocity and angular momentum, let's analyze the toy that we saw in the beginning. We will look into the problem by splitting it into three simple problems. In the first one, we will look at the rotation of the central disk only. As you can see, the disk is rotating in clockwise direction about a horizontal axis. Applying right hand thumb rule, the angular velocity vector is pointed towards right, as shown on the screen. Now, in the second simple problem, we will consider the statics of the system. As you can see, the toy is like a cantilever beam placed without any support on a vertical column. The weight of the toy is acting downward due to the gravitational pull and an equal and opposite force is acting at the contact as the reaction force. These two forces constitute a couple given by C is equal to weight multiplied by distance and the sense of the couple is clockwise. This couple topples the toy down. But what about the direction of this vector? Again, apply the right hand thumb rule, the vector is perpendicular to the screen and pointing away from you. Now let's combine these two simple problems into the third problem. For that, let's have an XYZ three dimensional coordinate system. A disk is rotating in clockwise direction about the X axis looking from the direction shown. If the same is viewed from rear side, the disc appears to rotate in counterclockwise direction. Applying right hand thumb rule, the angular velocity vector is pointing in the negative x direction. 
the magnitude of which is given by 2 pi n by 60. Now weight of the disc causes a clockwise couple to form about the y axis. Again applying the right hand thumb rule, the couple vector points towards the negative y direction. In fact, these two vectors, omega and c, are acting on the same xy plane. And obviously, the resultant will also be on the xy plane. Now, the pink color vector is the resultant of omega and c. At this point of time, the system finds an unbalanced resultant vector inside it. Since the natural tendency of any system is to acquire an equilibrium state, the system balances itself by changing the axis of spin and align with the resultant vector. While doing this, the axis of spin rotates about the vertical z axis. Again in the new balanced condition, a new resultant vector causes an unbalance in the system. Again the system behaves as it did previously. While balancing this way, the axis of spin is actually executing a continuous rotational motion about the vertical z axis. This motion is named as the precessional motion and the z axis about which this motion is taking place is termed as axis of precession. Now you got the reason why the toy is behaving differently. Furthermore, the speed of precession is dependent on two factors. Number one, the speed of the disc omega and the weight of the object. As the speed of the disc increases, the resultant unbalance also varies, which causes the precessional velocity to get reduced. The second factor is the weight of the object. As the weight increases, it results in an increase in the precessional velocity as it is evident from the simulation shown. The first one consists of a single weight. The second one two weights and the third one three weights. The third one which is having more weights is processing at highest velocity. Now what's this? This is the engine of an aircraft and is known as a turbo fan. The rotor is spinning in the clockwise direction from the front view and is aligned with the x-axis. Applying the previously discussed rules and analyzing the system in the XYZ coordinate system, we come to the conclusion that precessional motion is clockwise about the vertical Z direction. Do we have any crosscut method to assess the directions of these rotations without applying any rules? Yes, we do. Look at this table. The first row represents the axis of spin. Second row, the couple due to weight of the object. And the third row represents the axis of precession. Wherever you see a negative sign, it represents clockwise direction. Let's look at the first column. When x and y are positive, z is negative. In column 2, x and z are positive, y is negative. When y and z are positive, x is negative. Which means that when two of them are positive, third one will be negative. And we have a fourth case in which all are negative. The only assumption here is the direction of view of the axis, which you can see in, as in the slide. The x and y axis are viewed from their front position and as for the z direction, it is viewed from the top. Remembering this table is very very easy. Let's see how to use it. Say we have a problem as shown in the slide. A rotor spinning in clockwise direction along the x axis. Given that the rotor is spinning clockwise along the x direction and the couple is also clockwise, what is the direction of precession? Filling the cells one by one, x is clockwise, which means that it is negative x. Couple is also clockwise, again that also is negative. And we know that when two of them are negative, the third one will also be negative. That means that z is negative. Precessional motion is clockwise. 
Let's summarize our discussion. When an object spins about an axis and that spinning axis is not arrested in space, it gives rise to a special kind of motion known as precession. Can the reverse of this scenario be true? That is, will the two angular velocities cause anything on the system? Will that create a couple? Think about it and we will discuss this question in the next video. I hope that this video is beneficial to you and I'll share some important YouTube links in which the same topic is discussed intuitively. I recommend you to watch those videos as well. See you in the next video. Thank you.